So level sequences are incredibly useful, especially in the context of cinematics, either in game or otherwise. But there are some basics that I wanna talk about before we jump into the actual level sequences here. So you'll have some foundation. I'm gonna right click in the content browser, go to cinematics and select level sequence. I'm gonna call this one LS for level sequence demo. I'm going to drag it into the level. We create a new actor and you can turn on autoplay if you want. Uh, that would go ahead and if you hit play, it's going to go ahead and just fire off this uh, level sequence. First thing I want to add is a camera. I can do that by clicking this camera icon. We are now looking through the new camera. And you can see here in the outliner, there is a new actor, Cine Camera Actor, and it has this new information next to it, which is a lightning bolt and the word LS Demo. LS Demo is the sequencer that owns it. And the fact that it has a lightning bolt tells us that this is a spawned actor. So what that means is you can take this same level sequence, drop it into a different level or add an extra instance to this level, and it will generate a new Cine Camera Actor. The other version of that is a possessable actor, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But before we do, I wanna show you how to control which camera you're looking through. So you can either click this little icon right here to hop out. I can deselect the camera to get rid of that little picture in picture window there. I can reselect the camera actor to bring that window back, and I can select this icon, the camera icon, to look through the camera once again. Okay, so that's the basics of selecting the camera and looking through it. Now I want to add a new actor. I'm going to come over here, go to all classes and type in camera rig. We're going to get a camera rig rail. And that's going to be sitting here in the world. We've got a new actor. What I want to do is I want to make this actor controllable via the sequencer. So I'm going to select it in the outliner and then drag it over and drop it. So now it is possessable, which means if I drag this level sequence in, it's going to look around for this actor and then whatever I'm trying to do to that actor, the sequencer can do. If I drag the sequencer into a level that does not have this specific camera rig rail actor, then this will turn red and it'll say, I don't know where this thing is and I can't do anything to it. If I want to convert this into a spawnable actor. I can just right click and go to convert spawnable. And now the camera rig rail is, is completely owned by the sequencer and I can drag this into a different level and it will just create a new camera rig rail. Okay. So the camera rig rail is a spline object, which means if I select this little white point there, I can drag it and change the shape of the camera rig rail there. I can rotate and I can scale the handles on that spline to get a very uh, specific curve. Now, one of the things I noticed is the more points you have, the more, I guess, jerky the camera movement is. So two splines gives a nice movement. More than that, it can get a little bit much, right? So I'm gonna keep it at two. If you did wanna add more, you can hold Alt and then just drag out another point. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. And as you add new points, it's gonna reconfigure the, the spline handles so that they all flow in a nice movement. All right, so now we've got a camera rig rail and we've got a camera. I wanna associate the camera with the rail. So I'm gonna just give myself a little bit more space here. I'm gonna select the Cine Camera Actor. I'm gonna go to this little plus icon. We'll go to Attach, and we want to attach it to the camera rig rail. And now that we've got the rail, we need to add a couple more things. By clicking the plus sign there, there's a current position on rail. And then the next one is going to be lock orientation to rail. So we're at frame zero, zero, zero. If I want to, if I want to scrub, I can just click that little icon there and move back and forth. I'm going to go back to the first frame and I'm going to click this button right here, which is going to be current position on rail, that teens time circle there. That's going to set a key at zero. Click this icon to roll to the end. I'm going to set this value to one and we will set a new key. So now as I'm scrubbing, you can see this controller and the position of the camera are moving up and down on the rail. But the position of the camera is a little bit strange. I might want it actually sitting closer to that point right there. So what I need to do is go to the Cine Camera Actor, expand Transform, go to Location, and then just zero all of this stuff out. And you will see that it its new understanding of what its origin is, is basically whatever that, that point is on the, on the camera rig rail. So it's sitting directly on the rail itself. I'm gonna just raise it up a tiny bit, go to the Z uh, uh, value here, and then just 
bump it up. It's also going to have some rotation on it, whatever the rotation was when I let go of the camera. So I'm going to zero that out as well. So the camera is not going to, by default, orient itself along the rig. You can see that it's always pointing in the same direction, but if I turn this boolean on there, lock orientation to rail, now the camera is going to follow the orientation of the rail very nicely. There's another really cool thing, which is if I wanted to have the camera point at something, let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to select the camera. There's this enable look at tracking. When I do that, I can get this actor to track and then uh, select this little uh, eyedropper thing there and then just select whatever I want the camera to be looking at. Let's head back over to the sequence. You can see here what that looks like. And we are going to be traveling along the spline and looking at whatever we told the camera to look at, which can be very nice. And you might notice there's like an ease in and an ease out. That's controlled here in the curve editor. I'm gonna go ahead. So I've got the cine camera actor. I need to go to the camera rig rail. And this thing has this lock or uh, sorry, uh, current position on rail. So right now it's gonna look like a flat line or yeah, pretty much flat line because of the scale. If I click this icon here and we go to normalized view mode, you can see that we're getting that nice ease in and ease out movement on that curve. That's totally editable. I'm not gonna to talk too much about that, but I just wanted to kind of bring it to your attention that it is something that you can totally control. All of these attributes can be controlled in terms of their curves as you translate between one value and another. Just a couple more things here. So if you want to convert a spawnable object to a possessable object, you can just right click and then go to convert to possessable, which will return it to the level. So if you open the level without the level sequence, this object will exist in the level. But if you if you try to open the sequence someplace else, it'll look for this and say, I can't find it. Again, that's the, uh, the main difference between possessable uh, versus spawnable. Anything that you want to always be present in the level sequence should be spawnable if you ever think you're gonna use it someplace other than the level that you're, you're working in initially. The other thing is you may have noticed this camera cuts track is added when I add a cine camera actor. What you can do is you can actually have multiple cameras if you want in a single sequence. I'm gonna go ahead and click the camera icon to create another one. There's our cine camera actor two. And I'm going to just right click here in the camera cuts track on this, uh, sorry, not right click, a uh, regular click, left mouse button click on this plus sign. And then I can go ahead and attach the new cine camera actor that I have created. And wherever my slider is, my time slider, that's where it will split those two shots up. So if I, you can either select one camera actor, the camera rig rail, the other camera actor. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not popping up a window. Maybe I need to be in the range of it. But anyway, the easiest way to see what you would be looking... Oh, I'm currently looking through that one. That's why. Let me go and hop out of there. Um, okay, so the easiest way to see what's going on with your camera cuts is to just click this little icon here. And this will automatically hop between what the one camera sees and then what the second camera is seeing. And obviously, I don't have any animation on the second camera. Just kind of wanted to show you how that would work if you wanted to set it up. All right, so now that we have the level sequence setup and added as an actor to our level. And we have autoplay turned on. If I hit play here, you'll see that it'll run through the stuff that we set up. And then at the end, it'll spit the camera out at the origin. So those are the basics. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a more complex example, the level sequence that I used in the main project.